Facebook and Zoom appear ready, so let's begin our service. If you wish to follow along, you can scan the QR code on the screen or go to rivercrestuu.org slash 2024-OOS to find the order of service.
River Way. I'm Peter Fox, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. You here in this room, we welcome you. You on Zoom and Facebook Live, we welcome you. However you made your way among us this morning, we welcome you. Let us pause together. <clears throat> Enter into this time together as we connect again with one another, with the holy by any name and the life of love within us all, while we remain mindful that not everyone can read or find it easy to breathe, let us pause here in the headlong rush of our lives to breathe into our time together. In this congregation, it is our mission to nurture our spirits, love intentionally, and create a just and healthy planet in our enduring search for truth, meaning, and faith. What we share here is not an unchanging dogma, but an affirmation that we are called to be agents of love and justice, and to build a world where everyone is cherished for who they are. Medeni is on for celebration. She will be returning to the pulpit on September the 1st. Our summer services are led by some of our many articulate and spiritual members. I pause to read A Universe of Possibilities by Jane Carter. We live on a fragile island of life in a universe of possibilities. For many millennia, humans have been on a journey to find answers, answers to questions, questions about naturalism and transcendence, about who we are and why we are here, and of course, who else? Is it really just us? Are we alone in this vast universe of energy and matter and chemistry and physics? Well, if we are, it's an awful waste of space. Others are asking similar questions. What if they look up at the night sky, at the same stars, but from the opposite side? Would the discovery of an older civilization, an older cultural civilization out there, inspire us to find ways to survive our increasingly uncertain technological adolescence? Might it be the discovery of a distant civilization and our common cosmic origins finally drive home the message of the bottom of all humans. Whether we're born in San Francisco or Sudan, or close to the heart of the Milky Way, we are the products of a billion-year lineage of wandering stars. We, all of us, are what happens when a primordial mixture of hydrogen and helium evolves for so long that it begins to ask, Our opening hymn is Come, Come, Whoever You Are. It's number 188 in, the, in your hymn. Please rise in body or spirit and join in the sermon. In a moment, I will invite you to join in singing Come, Come, Whoever You Are. The text is from Razlana Jalaluddin Rumi, who was a 13th century Muslim theologian, scholar, and Sufi mystic. Born in modern day Afghanistan from Persian speaking parents and lived most of his life in the Anatolian Peninsula, which is where modern day Turkey is. He was a lifelong scholar of the Quran and Islam. We are singing it today, including the crucial descant, though you've broken your vows a thousand times, thereby welcoming ourselves and each other as we are, with our failings and shortcomings, again and again, turning back toward joy and belonging. Thank you. 
Flaming chalice. It's a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist tradition, a beacon of religious liberty shining through generations now ours to hold high. As we light our chalice together this morning, let us join our voices with these words. We light this chalice to ignite the divine spark of the universe. In the light of love, let us renew our covenant as we sing together.
In our community each week, we share pieces of our lives. We take a moment to share our joys, our sorrows, our gratitude. Here with people who love us for exactly who we are, where we are, right now. Here in this room, we will share from the book. If you are in Zoom or on Facebook, well, in Zoom, and you would like to share a thought, a prayer, a joy, or a concern with us in this moment, write it in the chat, and we will lift them up together. The book we have from Vienna, Prayers for Democracy in Venezuela, as Venezuelans protest massively and peacefully for their election to be respected. participated in creating the beautiful banners that now grace our sanctuary. part of us, we will miss you. That is a fact. So now, in the quiet of this hour, if there is something on your own heart that you wish to mark without words this morning, you're invited to come forward and drop a stone of reflection in this water as we hold one another in sacred community. For as William James wrote, we are like islands in the sea, separate from the surface, but connected in the deep. Let us share a moment of reflection, connecting us all to those who are
these things, spoken and unspoken, written and unwritten, asking that our hearts be seen, even as we become seers of hearts, that we may serve one another and those beyond our walls with love and thankfulness today and every day. Amen. And in hope, a shame, not a space, Satnam, blessing. sustain and strengthen this beloved community and its work in our world through the gifts of our time, our skills, our love, and our money. Each Sunday, 25% of our undesignated offerings go to LifeNet for Families, which provides meals, clothing, and support for those in need here in Broward County. Ushers, please come forward to receive the offering.
Thank you for these generous gifts. Have you ever wondered why you are here? You are the only you that ever was, has been, or ever will be. You have so much. Maybe you will invent something that no one has ever seen before. Maybe you will build things that reach high into the sky. as many things as you can try. See as much as you can see. Whenever you go, take your hopes, pack your dreams, and never forget. It is on journeys that discoveries are made. You will help others to see the beauty in each day. Or maybe you will lift cheering crowds onto their feet. Do everything with love, follow your heart and see where it takes you. Maybe you are here to shine a light into places that have been dark for far too long. Maybe, maybe we will speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Maybe you are here to help in ways that only you can. There will be struggles, there will be fears, and it won't always be easy. At times, it 
will feel really hard. You might make a mess of them. You may fall down. You may fail. But you will also get back up and you will rise a little stronger and a little taller because there really is more inside of you than you know. And this world needs your gifts, your talents, and your big ideas. And maybe you're just getting started. What if you are only scratching the surface of what you can do and who you can be? What if you have talents you haven't discovered yet? There is something powerful, even magical, about you. You already have everything it takes to do big things. have no idea just how good you can really be. And maybe you don't know how much you matter. And maybe, just maybe, the world has been waiting centuries for someone just like you. One thing is for sure, you are here. And because you are here, anything is possible. And the back of the cover says, maybe, just maybe, you will exceed your wildest dreams. Now this book is absolutely beautiful and the slides didn't do it justice so I'm going to leave it over here on the table for those of you who want to take a look at it. It is absolutely gorgeous. So let's sing our kids out. Let kids. us do that, sing our kids. Kids. To class, kids to class. We love you and bless you and send you on your way. We love you and bless you. Met HD down at the theater, and it was Porky and Bess. And since that time, Georgette and I have been singing about three dozen times a day. It's summertime, and the living is easy. And we just can't stop singing it. Wasn't that a fantastic show? It's just what a great show. I've always wanted to see it. This is the first time. All right. I will start my talk because this is what I get paid to do. <laughs> and 
And uh, I'm here to talk about Rod Serling. Serling, the creator of the Twilight Zone. And the original Twilight Zone show was from 1959 to 1964. And I was at the age of between 11 and 16. <clears throat> at that time, TV was trying to find itself in the mid 50s. Was it going to cater to the lowest common denominator, or was it going to reach for higher goals? Maybe be educational, maybe have values related to the common good, or maybe encourage critical thinking. There were two, good, two people in the vanguard of movies on TV at those times, trying to push for a higher uh, positive direction for TV. One was Fred Rogers of the uh, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood fame, and the other was Rod Serling of the Twilight Zone fame. Mr. Serling had <clears throat> a very tough time getting TV executives and sponsors to go along with the concept of TV having a higher goal, higher goals. Known for progressive storytelling, Rod was always attempting to sidestep the censors by addressing complex and controversial issues allegorically. No, I have to look that up too. That means the that means using characters and events to represent moral and political qualities and conveying them through hidden meanings. He moved to the science fiction format to get around the censors because, as he said, it was impossible to show Democrats and Republicans being racist bigots. But a Martian or a Newton, they were all fair game. <coughs> To, <clears throat> so the format of the Twilight Zone was developed to get around the censors for topics like racism, prejudice, xenophobia, and many others. The writers of Star Trek consider Mr. Sterling their mentor. Executives and sponsors wanted nothing to do with complicated and controversial topics. And from below the Mason-Dixon line, a few folks went crazy over the showing of Lassie having puppies on the TV show Lassie, which was a show about a beautiful and smart female collie dog and the family and son who took care of them. It was an interesting show too. TV stations were flooded with negative comments, actually just <clears throat> hundreds of letters that were copied from the same complaint and worry, but it worked. If I want my kids to see sex, I'll take them to the burlesque. It's kind of scary. <clears throat> it was so hard to have thought-provoking television. Mr. Sterling wanted, t wanted to be TV's conscience. He wanted viewers to learn and viewers to think, and to have viewers learn how to think, just like Mr. Rogers was trying to do. Rod had an opening statement for every show, and a very thought-provoking closing statement at the end of each show. And I'm gonna think about that. Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> Rod Sterling actually gave the, uh, the opening statement and he spoke with very tight lips and his teeth almost touching each other. And he would say, and this was the original opening statement, you're traveling to another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind, a journey into the wondrous land whose boundaries are those of the imagination. Your next stop, the twilight zone. And then there would be I had it earlier. It came on earlier. It's not coming up. Oh well. It did very well. Thank you. I'm just going to walk off stage if I couldn't get that sound. 
I love the show because it made me think, and it made me aware of social issues. Some shows clearly dealt with moral and ethical issues, <clears throat> while others were pure entertainment, scary and horror-filled, which I hated and still hate. But others seemed ambiguous at the conclusion, leaving it up to me to determine the solution of the dilemma. The show was great. I always say after a few beers, that is, that my basic morality as a young person was developed from watching The Lone Ranger or watching some Martian on the Twilight Zone. <laughs> and <clears throat> The Lone Ranger was a Western good guy who uh, attempted to clean up the West with moral actions and lessons with each show. I totally disagree with folks who say TV can't affect kids because it really uh, helped warm me. Again, as I said, Mr. Sterling wanted to be TV's conscience. And just one of the shows to show an example, I'll just have talk about one, there was a, two spaceships. And they both communicated and they each said they had a single malcontent that they wanted to unload. So they agreed that they would exchange this prisoner. And uh, when they got the they got together, the Americans came forward with their malcontent being had a snout and hound dog eyes. Not very attractive to us, but they had nothing nice to say about the person, but everything was a subjective that they were saying. <clears throat> the other, when they opened their doors together to exchange prisoners, this, the leaders here, they had the snout and the hound dog eyes. And they brought a prisoner who was a Marilyn Monroe kind of figure. <laughs> and they had said nothing that she was ugly and she didn't fit in and da 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 da. So it was like, oh my God, that's how prejudice works. They're just a little different and you know, you gotta hate them, you gotta get rid of them. So it was, you know, as a young kid, this was, you know, this was kind of eye opening. So where did Rod get his ideas? He grew up in a reformed Jewish family who attended services only on the high holy days. But they loved everything about Christmas. It was a fantasy to them. They even had a Christmas tree. Rod said that his ethics came from his dad, who said to him, son, I'm not a, a good Jew, but I think I'm a good person. My philosophy is I take people for what they are and not for where they go to pray. Rod Sterling often lit candles for his deceased parents at sundown. And he kept all the letters that his parents wrote to him during the World War II. <clears throat> and he would, uh, and he kept all the letters from his parents from World War II, and he would read them time and time again throughout his entire life. Amazing. His future wife, Carol, who he met and married while in college, was a UU, and he became a UU at that time and became very close to its uh, noted uh, humanist uh, minister. He found the values of the Jews to be very similar to the best of Judaism. He was also influenced by intolerances that he faced from time to time and used those in his scripts. His first experience, experience with intolerance was in college. He was blackballed and thrown out of his fraternity for, do, for dating non-Jewish girls. And his to-be wife was told by her father, you are not to marry that black-eyed Jew. Her father was a southerner, and he did not even attend their wedding. Rod served in World War II, and he used the experience in a few of the scripts. He enlisted the day after high school graduation, and he was proud of his military service, wearing his military bracelet throughout his entire life. Rod experienced the worst of war in the jungles of the Philippines. He experienced PTSD and screaming nightmares until he died. Sadly, he smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. I had to look it up. There was 20 in a pack, who knew? And that's 60 cigarettes. That averages about two to four per hour. He died at the age of 50 from complications of a heart attack. He was a good and loving father and a fantastic dad. <clears throat> and his daughter, Anne, wrote a thoughtful and very sweet biography of her dad. 
and they shared a lot of funny nicknames and some, you know, a little risque. But uh, it's a definitely a good read if anybody wants to borrow it, be my guest. It's, he was an amazing dad, and every uh, future father should, uh, should read that book. <clears throat> an example of an end, in the, <clears throat> an end of the uh, a show, closing statement, was this. A sickness called hate. It's not a virtue. It's not a virus. It's not a micro. It's not even a germ. But a sickness nonetheless. Highly contagious and deadly in its effects. But don't look for it in the twilight zone. Look for it in the mirror. And in conclusion, I'll finish by, I think if he was alive today, he might write a show involving America's present day political chaos. But the closing statement that right might read as such. If you're feeling that a twilight zone, something that exists between a reality, a reality and a fantasy, is just an impossibility, and that <clears throat> that is just some old TV concept, that it's just an impossibility, and that it's an old TV concept, <laughs> and that has nothing to do with you, but you find yourself asking, could anything really possibly exist between a reality and a fantasy? Well, we ask you this question. Have you been paying attention, close enough attention, to the politics and news of these divided United States? Thank you.
At River of Grass, we offer many ways to live our Unitarian Universalist faith in action. You'll find them in our weekly email, our Facebook page, and our website, riverofgrassuu.org. Here are some upcoming opportunities to fulfill the mission and vision of this congregation and other announcements for the life of this beloved community. Do we have any announcements? Codes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So River of Grass is partnering with Rise Up Florida to support enshrining abortion access in the Florida Constitution this November. You may have heard. The month's Super Saturday event, this month's Super Saturday event has been moved from yesterday to this Saturday, the 24th. It's also changed locations to a yet to be determined place in Deerfield. We are co-sponsoring this event with the ACLU of Broward. Um, I will have a sign up link with me if you see me after service. Um, this is a door-to-door -door canvas event because, even though it's hot, I know, this is the best way to reach voters. So if you have, you know, if you can give yourself a little bit of time, an hour or two on Saturday to walk door-to-door -door with an umbrella or mister, whatever you need, that would be awesome. If you prefer, oh, and all canvassers will be given yes on four t-shirts, little incentive. If you prefer or would also like to write postcards, you can see me. I have bundles to give away of 25 or 50 postcards. You can see me after service. In this week's uh, email bulletin, there are links to learn more about how the Unitarian Universalist Association is supporting this amendment, along with other ways to support the cause. See me after service for the link. And the email came out Friday, right? Uh, and there was an email that what came out Friday to some people who, if you had, if you were here last time. And you'll soon hear a de debut, uh, yes, on four version of Be Our Guest. Uh, a lyricist uh, was helping organize the uh, the binding and uh, organizing of the postcards, and he's written a brilliant parody to that song. And I also want to say, great, if we can and work. The choir tonight will be. We'll be practicing it tonight. We'll be practicing right. that tonight, and we'll be recording it eventually. It's going to be a surprise for Aaron Sang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to say was, uh, great, if we can work on getting a QR code up and just leave it up on the screen so people can just point their phones to sign up. words from the pen of Susan L. Van Desser. Let us sing the magic of imagination by which we know one another and learn the lives of eras gone by. Let us sing the magic of creation by which we build the world of our soul and teach, uh, and teach its wisdom to others young and old. Let us sing the magic of our lives together holding and shaping by the movement of breath from heart to lung and all new life that is to come. Go now with singing, go now with magic in your fingertips, touch this world with your life. So we extinguish this flame, but not its meaning and mission in our hearts. Our time together has come to an end. Go in peace, be of service to one another, and may you move through the world in love for all of your days. So 
So in, this, in these changing times, let us be all the more vigilant to hold before us a vision of the world transformed and dare to transform ourselves to make it so. Until we meet again, shine on. Shine on.